to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. There is an ability, there is an activity of the Holy Ghost at work in you. The Bible says, according to his power that worketh in you. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. According, there is an ability, there is an empowerment. It gives you audacity. It gives you courage. It gives you confidence. That you can speak and say, I'm above all. And have no apology for it. You can speak and say, I am unlimited. Not by power. Not by might. I refuse to see challenges. I refuse to see limitations. I'm moving forward. I'm moving onward. My life is blessed. Rising from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Because we are the victorious ones. Friends, I have one guarantee. No one who hears these words and pays this price now will become a failure in this life. I know it. It's not a prophecy. It's the truth. Hallelujah. For this is a price we are paying. The Bible says, There remaineth a rest unto God's people. There remaineth a rest. If it, um, Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 10, it said, There remaineth a rest. There remaineth a rest. And verse 12, I believe, says, That let us therefore labor. There is a rest that is a gift. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a gift. But there is another rest that is a reward. It's not a gift. It said there remaineth a rest. The word labor in the Greek is constrain yourself to death to enter that rest. And verse 11 says that he that has entered his rest. Oh, verse 11. Okay, verse 10. Sorry now. That's a for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. There is a Sabbath. The Bible says on the seventh day God rested. Many of us are pressing to enter our seventh day. You may not understand. Some of us are in day two. Others are in day four. Others are in day five. Hear me friends, now is not the time to give up. Because a time will come when men say there is a casting down. You will be functioning from that rest. You are paying the price now. Praying in the spirit. He said, Jerry Menet a rest. Jerry Menet a rest. This rest is a reward. You press. That's why we are praying. Many of you are coming all the way from Kaduna. Many of you are coming all the way from Gaskian very far. Many of you are to trek here. There's no money in your pocket, but you are pressing. There is a pressing. It's a pressing by faith. Laboring in the place of the world. You may not look like it. Laboring in the place of prayer. In spite of the challenges. A day will come. And the spirit of God is supervising your press. Soon he will tell you you are in day five. And then he will tell you you are in day six. The last round. Press. Tell me. There remained a rest. There remained a rest. And the Bible tells us that anyone that enters that rest ceases from his work. Oh, I choose to press. 
no matter what it will cost me this suit will not rob me no the organization here will if i will kneel down and lie down to press i will press if i will fast to press i will press if i will labor in the world to press if i will keep myself from evil to press i will press one day the door will be opened let me tell you when you enter you have entered We live in a generation where people do not understand their partnership with the Holy Spirit for victory. So you can see it in the world, but then you will not press. Paul speaking said, God desired this rest even for the Israelites. But because of unbelief, they couldn't enter this rest. He said, Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as he did, as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. They hardened their hearts. And he swore in his wrath, saying, they shall not enter my rest. He said, but like them, today we are hearing the word. He said, they heard the word just like we did. But they, the word did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. So friends, don't think you are doing anybody a favor by coming for koinonia. Every time the devil tells you, why are you just a church folks always with God? Tell him I'm pressing. There is a press in the spirit. I may not eat food now. I will take the Gary brain in tongues and keep pressing. For I know a day will come. I will not bow to Baal. I will not compromise God's standard. Remember our teaching on the kingdom. Satan will tell you bow and I will give you the keys. God will say hold on. Endure. He that endures to the end shall receive a crown. There is a crown that he gives those who press. And that's what we are here to do. Hallelujah. God bless you, be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's continue our series. We've been teaching on the kingdom. For those of you who are just coming today, catching up, we've been having a series on the kingdom. Hallelujah. Trying to understand the concept of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. Because we realize that from scripture, God did not give us a religion. God did not give us tradition. Hallelujah. He gave us a kingdom. The summary of the Bible is that a king. Hallelujah. An eternal king who reigns. Produced a colony of his kingdom. Remember the concept of the colony? Hallelujah. A subset of the mother kingdom. And he brought us to a point where we will rule and reign and sent us a representative of the kingdom the one who connects us with the reality of the mother kingdom we call him the governor of that kingdom he's the one we call the holy spirit and he's vested with the responsibility of teaching us empowering us training us making us to be citizens of that kingdom experientially hallelujah and helping us understand the constitution the modus operandi the values of the kingdom hallelujah and last week we spoke about the fact that or the week before last that Jesus didn't come primarily to take us to heaven hallelujah for we were designed to rule and reign in this earth realm Jesus primarily came to restore us to the life of the kingdom to grant unto us the keys of the kingdom that were collected from Adam hallelujah and then to connect us to the governor of that kingdom who will continue an extension of his ministry in our lives. Hallelujah. Then a day will come we will be translated for, from this realm so that the enemies of the kingdom will be judged. And after that judgment we will return with our king and we will reign in partnership. Hallelujah. Revelations ends with the beginning of a new dispensation. Where the citizens of the kingdom rule and reign with their king. Hallelujah. And I did teach us that the apex of citizenship is loyalty. Hallelujah. There is no true citizen of any kingdom who does not pay total allegiance and loyalty. In a democracy, everyone lives for himself or herself. Hallelujah. But in a kingdom system, every citizen lives for the king 
And if at any point you were caught doing anything antagonistic to or trying to antagonize the values of the kingdom, you were termed what? A rebel. And so to help us understand that God didn't give us a religion. He gave us a life. He gave us a kingdom. When Jesus walked upon the earth, all his parables were linked to the kingdom. The kingdom is like unto this. The kingdom of God is like unto this. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. Hallelujah. And he gave us the keys to the kingdom. Access to rule and to reign. Hallelujah. And last week we considered Excuse me. Hallelujah. Last week we considered the fact that we need to advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. That we are on earth primarily to what? Advance the kingdom. You are not on earth just to go to school, get married, give birth to children, be the first person to build a nice house in your village or to buy a good jeep, grow old, write a book or two about yourself and die. No, there's more. Hallelujah. We are on earth to advance the kingdom. To extend the rulership, the influence. Hallelujah. Of the king. And then we spoke about the ways that we advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of us remember? I taught us about four ways to advance or the methods according to God's word. That we advance the kingdom. Hallelujah spoke about the place of influence that we need to have kingdom influence we spoke about the place of prosperity according to Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a hallelujah how that the cities of God will be spread through prosperity we spoke about um, what did we speak about again character hallelujah how that we need to be men and women of character we are sick and tired of a generation of anointed people who do not have character Hallelujah. And then we mentioned six areas where the church has allowed Satan to capture and many believers are falling victims. We spoke about the family life. How many of us remember that the family is a vital place where the influence of the kingdom needs to be reached? Hallelujah. We spoke about the business world. We spoke about the media. We spoke about arts. Uh, Sports, hallelujah. I'm sure some of you will be happy we spoke about sports, hallelujah. Because there are some people who say, God, I will not leave sports, just anoint me to walk there, hallelujah. And today, very quickly, I want to talk about the lifestyle of the kingdom. Very briefly, I really want us to pray the lifestyle of the kingdom understood how to advance the kingdom we must know how to live as citizens of this kingdom how many of you are seeing your life changed by this series let me see your hands because if you really are not getting changed then we are not making any progress hallelujah that our lives be changed so that when they pick you at random and say my sister what do you understand about Christianity and the kingdom life you don't just say I'm a Christian and uh, are you born again? The person who says you are going to hell and that's all. That you can let people know that God gave us a kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10. While I was walking at home this afternoon, I had a vision and um, I saw different ladders, different kinds of ladders. They were painted in different colors. And I saw us climbing these ladders. Others were helping others climb. Others were going up, but they would come down deliberately. To help others climb and there was such activity and 
I was watching and I saw some people who were not climbing. They were standing to supervise and ensure that others were climbing. And then at a point when they were satisfied, they would not climb like the other people. They would just look up and find themselves up. I believe in the spirit these were generals. And I believe that this is what God is doing. I believe God was encouraging me with this vision to let us know that we are making progress. There, was, there were many um, activities around. People were climbing. Others were trying to fall. Others. One thing I saw that happen is that so many people were holding others and taking them again. I think that was the greatest, the most comforting part of that vision. Others would go far and then would want to fall. And then somebody, even those below, would hold them and push them. I saw this and that was all. And God didn't tell me anything about it, but I knew by the Spirit that God was describing what was happening. Not just in Koinonia, but in the Church of God Universal. That God is helping us. Let me tell you, friends, we are rising. Are you listening to me? We may be moving at different paces, but you are making progress. Don't let Satan look at you and say, are you really making progress? Don't compare yourself with anyone. We are making progress. When Noah built the ark, the animals entered at different paces, but they all entered. The cheetah entered and the snail entered. That's why we are patient to teach the word until the least person among us becomes as great as David. Hallelujah. Verse 38 of Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. It says, now the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The lifestyle of the kingdom, hear me, is the lifestyle of faith. Are you listening to me? The lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith. That we come to a point where although we cannot see the king with our optical eyes, although we cannot see the governor with our optical eyes, we are absolutely convinced about their operation and we can partner with them. Hallelujah. One of the biggest um, challenge for kingdom people is that we always want to see to believe. How many of you know that saying, seeing is believing? Say, if I don't see it, I cannot believe it. Now, the lifestyle of the kingdom is such that the word of God becomes our eyes in the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says the eye is the light of the body. And then it also tells us that the entrance of this word gives light. That means there is a possibility for the word to become your eyes in the kingdom. Hallelujah. What do you need the eyes for in the physical realm? You need the eyes to see. And in that seeing you get direction. Hallelujah. Many of us need the eyes to be certain and to be convicted. Hallelujah. As a kingdom citizen, you must get to a point where the word of God becomes your eyes. The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen, but so we can see things that are unseen. He said, but things that are unseen. He said, for the things that are seen are temporal. The word temporal means subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. So when you become a citizen of the kingdom, one of the things that the governor, the Holy Spirit does, is he helps you understand that the life of the kingdom is the life of faith. Absolute trust. Hear me. Absolute 100% trust in the word of God. The integrity of his person. Hallelujah. That you get to a point where you are totally governed by God's word. You cease to walk by your sensory perceptions. Hallelujah. Because the strength of the flesh is your senses. Hallelujah. And for many people, 
we are happy only when good things happen around us hallelujah you are encouraged that there is a god only when your optical eyes can see something nice when you hear a good report you see we we have been trained in a world where our convictions come primarily from the interaction of our senses with this realm are you following me now so when your parents get promoted you are happy and then you sing you say god you are good you are good you are good but when you begin to walk with the holy ghost he begins to train you and he trains you by causing you to lose confidence in your senses he brings you to a point where you no longer trust your senses to give you the convictions hallelujah he makes his word more superior to your sensory perception and brings you to a point where you can hold on to his word that his word becomes your reality are you following me now and when that happens your language will change because people speak according to what they see is that correct when the word of god becomes your eyes then the words that you speak will be consistent with what you are seeing so that when men say there is a casting down and you say there is a lifting up people look at you and say are you stupid but then you tell them i'm a citizen of a foreign kingdom jesus said my kingdom is not of this world are you following me now so faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom unfortunately for many people they have decided to pick certain aspects of the kingdom and then for others say faith is not necessary faith is for word of faith people and so on and so forth faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom that our impulses in the kingdom are a derivative of what the word of god tells us are you following me now not what you are seeing we have so many believers who go and yell at god god you are not faithful god you are not this god you are not that but then you become a true citizen of the kingdom when you see the things that happen around you these are things that can weigh you down but then as a citizen of the kingdom you arise there's no money at home and your parents are running helter skelter and you tell them we are blessed and they look at you and say we understand you these foolish children and you tell them no 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 i'm not trying to pretend it i'm not trying to convince myself i'm drawing forth from a reality based on what i have seen god's word and then you sing you don't have to worry i like that song and don't you be afraid hallelujah and while you're singing people cannot understand and you tell them i hear in my spirit the abundance of rain and while you are saying that they just demote your father and you say i still hear the sound of the abundance of rain and people say now we understand this child is getting mad and then you enter and shut the door and they are waiting to hear you cry and all they hear is thank you jesus you say lord i thank you i brace up and your auntie doesn't have a child and then she turns and she says, lord i thank you because i'm a mother of nations and she goes to the market to buy baby clothes and people say now oh, madam is this embarrassment not enough and then suddenly the king of this kingdom sees true citizens of the kingdom let me tell you something friends do you know why the angels respect us so much they are compelled by the awe and the majesty of god that they see are you following me now you know for many of you i've had an encounter with jesus christ and um, when i saw him all i can remember is that i was a dead man on the floor i still don't know how his face looks like but i was seeing him and he just stretched forth his hands towards me and a beam of light the entrance of thy word give it light that was supernatural impartation directly by himself hallelujah 
and I got up with a supernatural encounter that I've not recovered from till this day and I'm not sure I'll recover forever hallelujah so for many of us who say God I need to do a discussion with you if I meet God I will tell him this I will tell him that you think so brothers and sisters if, you, if he's the real Jesus you see you will clap for yourself if you have the gods to at least look at him and you will understand why Isaiah said woe is me the holiness and the majesty and the awe so when he directs the angels the angels find it an honor they say it's an honor to serve the king but then when the angels look at the earth realm then they see one who has never seen a vision you don't know how God looks like yet you, you were not born when the Bible was written yet you say Lord I believe and the angels say what is this and even in the midst of challenges you say I believe I believe my voice is gone I believe Lord I believe and the angels wonder and they say what's going on and you begin to speak and say my life is blessed although you cannot see what is happening in the realm of the spirit the word of God becomes your eyes at that point you become a true citizen of the kingdom and hear me friends it takes a while it takes a while for you to begin to live by faith don't let anybody make you feel bad it takes a while and let me tell you how God does it he, beca he begins to dethrone everything that gives you strength and conviction outside his word until you are reduced with nothing but him he causes every other thing you trust aside from him not to work for you and then you find out that you are left with only one option then you say yes you are the king I finally agree of kings because a time will come your intellect will be too crippled to continue the journey a time will come your money will be your connection and everything you know at that point you will begin to lose confidence in every other thing and he will make you so inadequate that if you ever take a step outside him you will feel like dying then you begin to sing Steve's song and I am desperate for you hallelujah he brings you to a point where he's not just your God he's your life that you know that if you ever take a step without him you are dead see it's not ordinary for you to love God so much that you can lose everything for him you must come it happens by an experiential revelation that he's your life God will test everything that you have that you exalt to be God there are many things that represent God in our lives for many people is money silver and gold for many people is charisma and fame and influence for many people is anointing for many people is ministry God is such a jealous God that you will dethrone everything so every time you come into God's presence as you fellowship with him you know what is happening there is a death process going on it is a dethroning of everything and then he keeps rising above the list until he gets to that point where he sits at the seat of your heart at that point nothing else moves you the things of this world will seize their grip over your life hallelujah and there are many people who when it's time to worship God as you kneel down you just remember ah, I bought this 30,000 there's still a process of death that needs to go on in your life because you come to a point where you live totally based on his word can I tell you something most of the the sorrow and the the grief that many believers have is because they do not understand the faith life are you following me now a dead man cannot feel it even if you match him is that correct a dead man cannot feel it even if you insult him when you criticize a dead man what's his response 
many of us are so sensitive and overreactive and that's because we are still alive in ourselves we have not come to a point where the word of God becomes our life are you listening to me when you get to that point no matter how attractive the thing is if it is not you get to a point in your life where if it is not consistent with God's word I am not ready let me ask you a question how many of you can truly say right now inside and outside that you have gotten to a point in your life where you can say if the word of God does not lead me I'm not ready to move how many of you here can come to a point where you say every success I don't care how attractive it is if it is not founded on the word of God I'm not interested there are many of us praying and trusting God I'm a millionaire the day even if he sat on that waves five naira that's how you follow he said god will settle it later but the faith life is a life that is absolutely tied on the word of god hallelujah that my joy my satisfaction my fulfillment is a perfect derivative of god's word i find no other satisfaction outside his word his word represents my fulfillment i believe his word you are not a believer because you just came out for altar call you are a believer because you have come to a point where the word of god is king over your life i believe every truth in god's word i will die believing it if i never experience anything that looks like success in my life i've said it here and here again god forbid but if I die of sickness, the last word that will come out from my mouth before I die is by his stripes I am healed. I have come to a point where I don't believe God's word because of the result it will produce. I don't have any other option. Even if the word of God never produces a result. If God tells me now, Josh, the whole concept of heaven, it was just my way of making you love me. I said, God, no problem. I have so long as I will be with you. If you will be in hell, that's where I want to be i come to a point where my life is governed by the word of god hear me friends this is the secret of success that many believers fail to live by and they get whipped and punished again and again you must get to a point where the word of god becomes the governing factor of your life please hear me inside and outside and take seriously what i'm saying the kingdom life is a faith life the prosperity the success the increase and the fulfillment of a believer is tied to the voice of god and the word of god deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 it says if thou will um diligently hearken also to the voice of god he said it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commands which i commanded this day he said that the lord will the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken we have a bunch of stubborn believers that don't know how to obey the principles of their king hear me friends god created this universe he has put a principle to govern your life it's one definition of foolishness to live outside the word of god we try to live outside god's word and we want the blessings that are in the word hallelujah a true citizen of the kingdom is number one one who is loyal to the king but number two one who makes the word of god his priority 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 it's not the issue of being spiritual or not it's your life he said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings he said do not let them depart from your heart 
keep them in the midst of your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life to those who find them you program yourself to be a victor and a success in life when you allow the word of God govern every step of your life we are where we are by the grace of God simply because we have inclined ourselves to hear the voice of God I will do nothing in my life without the voice of God I will do nothing I will go nowhere I cherish his voice and I cherish his word because his word and his voice are one the word of God is my life the word of God is my life everything the word of God says not to do I will not do it I will not try it and see what happens I'm not ready hallelujah the Bible says for you to be a tither it says that's the way the heavens are open there's no point arguing people argue and say this and that and they are chopping our money in the church and so on and so forth and then they remain poor they remain broke and they get angry at those who are prospering that's the point if you refuse to obey God's word you will always feel angry at those who are obeying it hallelujah and then the Bible says God gives grace to the humble he says you are peace the proud when I find this in the word, I align my life by the spirit. And then you begin to see unending grace. I mean unending, inexplainable grace. Dimensions of grace that even you, the career, cannot explain. Hallelujah. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. See, hear me friends. You must take this word seriously search the scriptures you are not trying to be spiritual by doing it it's your life hallelujah i believe god's word i believe what god's word says about me this is my life this is the constitution of my life i'm not doing it because i have a responsibility in ministry to prepare a message no it's my life can you get to that point where you are totally governed by the word of God. If you tell me to drink and smoke, I will not just tell you no. If I tell you no, that's not enough. I will tell you no. Because it is against the constitution of my kingdom. Are you following me now? If someone comes to meet me and say, Josh, let's compromise the way of God. I'll tell him no. I am bounded by the word of God. I put my life on the line and I tell you the truth friends I have tested it I can tell you this word works this word works you see Peter said that which we have seen that which we have heard he said that which our hands have handled these are the things that we speak I have one guarantee it may not come as fast as you want but if you stay with this word it will build an enviable future for you every other factor notwithstanding hear me there is no challenge you want to face in this life or you are facing now that someone has not faced a worse one people have come out of unimaginable challenges to emerge gloriously in life there's none of us here that has an excuse so why do so many believers experience weakness and setbacks in their lives although they are called kings i'll tell you why it's not because they are not filled with the holy ghost it's not because they don't have a bible it's not because they don't come to church they have not come to a point where beyond church and religion are you listening to me i don't separate my personal life my spiritual life as it were everything is centered around the world whatever i'm doing with you that is not directly linked to the word i'm not interested call me a fanatic but i'll still be successful and you will need me badly hallelujah are you following me so in the kingdom life we must come to a point where you see friends you hear us talk about this word of god thing this word of god thing take it seriously we have seen some of our fathers who kept this word and in their old age they proved everything that scripture a man tell Osborne, he lived the prosperity of the scripture 
he healed the sick he casted out devils he raised the dead he has fulfilled every mandate that my eyes can see that god said a citizen should fulfill hmm. humorously jimmy keeps saying it that he must do everything the bible says we should do before he goes to be with the lord he has healed the sick he has casted out devils i think he's just remaining the dead hallelujah and he challenges himself every time i remember one time i went to pray for a dead man who was dead three days hallelujah and we went to uh faculty of medicine and they said i should come and i went in and i saw all kinds of dead men i said where is he where is the one i'm supposed to pray on and then they led me to the dead man and when i looked at him three days dead you better have faith you or at least you better know god you have to believe in something in that and i laid my hands on him called for the spirit prayed i did it three times when he didn't wake up i told the people get me out of this place get me out of this place remember my saying i'm not jesus christ i didn't die for anybody's sins i didn't collect money from everybody in everything god is still glorified and i encourage the people i told them make plans for the burial jesus is lord we who are alive should press into god and love him more how about that now you may laugh at me but the next time i go to pray for a dead body for many of you your first challenge will be to look at one if you will ever raise a dead man you have to stand before one from faith to faith hallelujah so god keeps training your faith can i tell you something friends you must stop complaining and shouting change your perception over situations and circumstances i follow me i was born by this i see every situation and challenge that comes as an opportunity to be schooled in faith to become a better citizen of the kingdom and that's why i i never never get angry and offended now i know it sounds like i'm very very serious about what i'm saying to come to a point where i'm depressed he said josh was wrong i said kai man this kingdom thing I know that God is a good God and I know that his word is true he reigns he reigns help me worship us my voice is gone he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass to bring his word to pass he reigns he reigns Lord you reign he reigns our God if we spend half the time we spend on movies staying on the world if we spend half the time we spend going from pillar to post to beg uncles and aunties on the world am i challenging you if we spend half the time looking for connection this and that and that i've told you this thing in this place and i'll say it again take your eyes off men they will disappoint you again and again and again the best of every man is still a man oh but i know one who can be trusted i know one who can be trusted he said by this time tomorrow Kabo Satabaya. only god can make that audacious statement and look at your life and say by this time by this time mercy prosper nigeria will be celebrating you by this time the world will begin to come to pass only god can make that kind of statement but can i tell you something the bible says the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants the secrets of the lord are not with everybody they are not with every christian they are with them that fear him another word there is them that are serious with him you can't be one leg in here one leg out lord i love you things are working lord i hate you things are not working you must come to a point where you say if i perish i perish that you hold on to god's word i never allow myself to speak anything outside god's word no one will preach me into that thing 
I will never call myself a failure because God's word never called me a failure. This is the principle of the kingdom. Are you following me now? I am not weak and beggarly. I am everything the word of God says I am. But how can you walk in light of a truth you do not know? And how will you know it until you search it out? There are many of us who don't even have Bibles. You have all kinds of dictionary. You have 48 laws of power. 96 laws of increase. 25 laws of victory. And you don't have a Bible. I, am, I guarantee you, you are not yet successful. Or when the fire burnt it to one side. And then it starts from Matthew chapter 5. And then we pride in these things. And then you hold your Bible and chuck it at the side of your pocket. Hmm. They are life to those who find them. And help to their flesh. You see this Bible? Forget how ugly and old it looks. There is life. I'm sucking out the life in this Bible. I believe it with all of my heart. There is nothing this world cannot do for you. There is no problem. Hear me. It always looks impossible until you see the result that the word of God brings. It always looks impossible. Is it a job? Is it debt? Is it financial hardship? Is it your life? Is it sickness and disease? I am confident. Let, let eternity prove me wrong. But I am confident that this is the believer's way of life. Oh, I believe the word. The word of God tells me that Jesus Christ left the Holy Spirit to school me and to build me. I am confident I have the Holy Spirit. I'm confident. My confidence is not because I'm praying in tongues. My confidence is because the word of God says so. I like a beautiful song that um, for many of us those of us who had the privilege of attending Sunday school. Some of us didn't attend. You always run away. They say, come on Sunday school. That's where you go and cause trouble. You scratch people's car. You paint things. You steal money. You buy ice cream with your offering. It says, Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? It didn't say because I'm a male or a female. For the Bible tells me so. For can you come to a point in your life where your confidence in life is because the word of God says so I believe God's word I believe God's word the word of God is the basis of my life I walk by the word I talk the word I live the word I act the word I truly believe this word I'm not saying it because I'm preaching I truly believe the word of God that's why I invest in the word. That's why I invest in the word. For many of you, all you have is free our daily manner that they share during one conference. You will never, how come we don't invest in the things of the kingdom? Hallelujah. We buy clothes, we buy Gucci shoes, and everything. And we pride. Let me tell you, you are an insecure man if all that you have is suit and money and cars and all of these things. The word of God. Show me a man that has nothing in this life but God's word. I show you one who the world will celebrate. But show me a, one, a man that that's why I don't envy any unbeliever. I don't care what he has. They are standing on slippery ground. The recession has shown us people woke up overnight and became poor and broke. The world millionaires. No, I'm not ready for that kind of life. I need a life that is founded upon the rock. Hallelujah. Can you reduce the key? Let me sing a very beautiful song. Some of us who came from Orthodox, it's time for you to appreciate me. Hallelujah. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love. Let you call self. We know I dare not trust. That's a powerful song. sweetest rain. But only lean on, on Christ, the solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock. Every other ground is truly sinking sand. No matter how sure it looks, it's sinking sand. All other ground is 
sinking sand. Hallelujah. Every other ground. There are many grounds. Grounds of connection. Grounds of money. Grounds of I know this, I know that. Grounds of intellect. I'm telling you the truth. They are sinking. Many people are suffering and languishing and getting disappointed that after all of their education and their strength in themselves, it still looks like Satan is still above them. But the true citizen of the kingdom is one who cherishes the words of the king. Knowing that the king is a loving king and he will not tell you what to destroy you. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for five minutes and then you sit down. And then I'll finish up. Just hold your Bible and we're going to pray in tongues. If you truly came with one, hold your Bible. You want to embrace it, embrace it. We are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. That God, you impart a desire for your word. Go ahead and pray. Please make sure this is not the time to pinch and look at your neighbor. Take it seriously. This is a training. I believe your word. I have no other option. Come on, pray in the spirit. That's why you came. Inside and outside. Your word is my guiding light. Your word is my life. I live by your principles. No compromise. Hold your Bible. Hold your Bible. Hold your Bible. Pray in the spirit. I take your word seriously. I take your word seriously. I'm a doer of the word. I take your word seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be seated. When you get to that point in your life where you respect God's word, where you value God's word, he said, how amiable are your laws? They are my meditation all day long. Buy an MP3. Buy an iPod. Stuff your phone with the word of God. Messages that teach you the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Get worship songs. Lie down in your room and saturate yourself. Faith is coming into your spirit. As you hear, you may lie down in a little room with nothing to eat but there is an investment. You are becoming a true citizen of the kingdom. And you keep pressing in the spirit from day one to day two to day three. One day you will step into the seventh day. And it will, you cannot even stop the cycle of victory and success that will begin to follow you. We have a lot of believers lazy at the word. Oh, pray for me. Pray for that. Especially in the south. That's why they like prophets. As an antidote to their laziness. People who will not stay with God's word. Let me tell you something. There are some things that even one gallon of olive oil will not do for you. You've got to stay in God's word. Are you listening to me? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you. So let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching
praising and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs can you get to that point in your life where you live by the word where you talk by the word your friend comes to meet you and say how is the struggle now and you tell him no um, I appreciate you but God is working I belong to a kingdom and that kingdom has an economic system every opportunity you have you are talking about the kingdom what are the consequences men will insult you men will call you a fanatic so what about it hallelujah many of you will break out of certain associations you cherish on account of your seriousness with God love is a command in the Bible there is no command that you must relate with everybody the Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness with right, light got to do with darkness and what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness hallelujah you come to a point where you get serious can we get to that point where everyone who attends koinonia is serious with the word of God I don't mean this hypocritical seriousness that we just do when we are looking for something Christ Christianity that there's there's a situation at hand and then everybody becomes serious no it must become your life how serious are you with the principles of God's word the Bible talks about tithing for instance how many of you are truly committed to tithing ah God understands let me tell you something God will not change his rules because of you he didn't change it because of Jesus Christ he will not change it because of you the wages of sin is death without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin Jesus died at his death he cried and said Eloi Eloi lama sabachthani the father still didn't change his mind let me tell you something if you think you keep violating God's word and get away with it can I tell you something a time will come you will face a bitter not because God will punish you it will be the consequences of obeying his disobeying his principles hallelujah speaking the word for instance for many of us we feel that it's not an important thing and we feel embarrassed speaking the word just say okay, this thing makes people like children this coin on yourself how can a mature person just be jumping and be saying I am this I am that but when you are in trouble you talk about it is it not with your mouth you use and confess it you keep talking you tell everybody from Pilate I am in trouble I am in trouble why can't you speak and say I am victorious so says the word of God you mustn't have a special prayer time you can be on your way you can be in your job and you say in the name of Jesus the word of God works in me the word of God is producing the character of the kingdom in me hallelujah the Bible says what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness the word of God gives us boundaries as believers hallelujah and so that we live by the principle of faith see faith is our concept of faith I thank God God is helping us because for many believers our concept of faith has just been a spiritual operation used to receive things that's the general concept of faith that is taught in church but I'm teaching you today that faith is a way of life are you following me now for many of us we think faith is only an operation when you need to receive something no faith is your way of life faith is the way of life that is governed by the word of God and the voice of God governed by the principles of the kingdom God is speaking to us this night that if we seriously want to become citizens of the kingdom take God's word seriously Job, the richest man in the east, gave us a blueprint of his success. He said, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord were upon my tabernacle. The Bible called him the richest man in the east. He was so blessed. He had children. He had everything that represented success. David tells us his secret. A man who loved God and had everything life could offer. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. He said, cast me not away from your presence. It was David that said, how amiable are your laws, O Lord. 
they are my meditation all day long. He said, as the deer pants after the water book, so my soul pants after you. Hallelujah. I bring to you a very simple but life-changing teaching tonight that you must come to a point where the word of God becomes your principle of operation. No matter what is happening around me, if the word of God tells me otherwise, I choose God's word. Are you listening to me? I don't need to wear an expensive shoe to know God is faithful. The word of God tells me already that his name is faithful and true. Are you listening to me? I believe God's word. God is asking us a question and it's not a general question. God is asking you. God is asking you. Do you believe my word enough? I be in your fashion uh, design school and whatever. Do you believe God's word? Do you believe God's word? God is asking a serious question. Do a believer is not just one who has gotten born again. A believer is one who has come to a point where his entire life revolves around the world. Has nothing to do with the church you attend. Has nothing to do your, with your denomination. This is the secret of life. I was told a humorous story about a man a very wealthy man who had some very stubborn children and there was this young boy among them and he wrote his will and you know just shared so many things and then when he was about to die he called the son and he said son come and he said I'm about to die and he brought out a brand new bible and he gave it to the son he said this is what I will give you it will make you a champion and it will change your life and then the father died and the child threw the bible away and tried to make it on his own the child suffered so much until he, i mean he suffered so much and then one day in his frustration after hitting himself from pillar to post he came to a point where he decided to pick up the bible at least just to look at it and when he opened the bible he was just reading reading he wasn't even getting the point and then mistakenly he turned to the last page of the bible and he saw a check that his father left and the father said if he takes the bible seriously then he should see that check and if he sees the check that was all his inheritance and from this story it was a true story someone was sharing it's something that happened i heard a preacher and when he saw it he broke down and he cried because for years the father deliberately put the check at the last page of the bible and said there is no how he can take this bible seriously without at least turning to the last page to see and while this guy was suffering the empires of his father were being occupied by banks and financial institutions because nobody could claim them and here was the inheritance that the father left with him do you know that applies to many of us? We have been running and crying over what the word of God can give us. As kingdom citizens, we must come to a point where we separate ourselves and stay with the word. What challenge are you going through in life? What area of life is not working for you? Have you ever taken out time to stay with God's word? Diligent study with God's word. And in the place of prayer and watch the hand of the Lord transform your life God is bringing this word tonight to draw us back to the place of the world that as citizens of the kingdom as ordinary as this book looks it contains the values of the kingdom and if you take it seriously and then respect the governor of that kingdom how come we respect men more than God if I walk to you now and I tell you come and collect a check of 5 million naira tomorrow you will be so glad and you even announce to your friends you say I have hammered but how come the word of God says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you said God they are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and a hope and many times we turn to God and shout and yell and insult and say God you are not faithful can you let the word of God become your eyes tonight 
you say lord i believe your word i choose to believe your word i'm not just believing your word because of the result it will produce i have come to a point where your word is life and i live by the operation of the word of god is what the bible calls faith faith is not necessarily about receiving faith is about living according to the word of god and we are going to pray and i really want us to pray and say god for many of us we need to pray and say lord please let there be a baptism of a desire for your word a desire for your word for many of us morning till night you are visiting friends everybody oh visit this visit that visit that can you stay with god's word and take god's word seriously i don't just mean opening the bible and putting it on your chest and sleeping till night i mean being alert wake up study god's word pray it into your life believe the principles and constrain your life to live by it i have one guarantee you will emerge a success you will emerge victorious and we are going to pray we have one simple desire that the word of god will put that the holy ghost will put a desire for intimacy with him and for his word in our lives are you listening to me bigger than ministry that we begin to live like true citizens of the kingdom so that you don't come to a point where you say something and people turn and say sorry are you born again for many of us tonight you came for koinonia but God is asking you, when will you be serious with my ways? The Bible said he showed Israel his acts. But to Moses, he showed Moses his ways. You know what his ways are? His principles. If I give you 1,000 naira, you will still need me to get it tomorrow. If I show you how I got it, you will be able to get it whether or not I'm there. He showed the Israelites wanted his acts. You know what we are teaching here by the grace of God? The ways of God. It's not just enough for you to see power and anointing but it's for you to also understand the operation of the spirit so that you begin to command perpetual victory in your life hallelujah and so we are going to pray in the next 10 minutes i don't know how you are going to cry to god you want to lie down you want to now it's not the time to pinch people and just smile as that was the message you I can ask that after the program hallelujah now is the time to rise up rise up on your feet everyone please can we inside and outside we are going to raise a cry and say lord i take your word and your ways seriously 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 i stake my life at your word i believe your word i'm a doer a doer of that word lift up your voice and begin to pray the lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith the lifestyle of the word speaking the word doing the word living the word knowing the word the word of god is all i know of our fathers lived it their lives have become an epistle for us to follow the bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise through faith staking their lives they encountered impossible situations yet the word of god brought them out lift up your voice and begin to pray oh i take your word seriously it's my life hallelujah it's my life inside and outside say lord i take your word seriously Raka ba 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 ba. They are life to those who find them. They are life if you care to find it. It will be life to you. And health is a secret of divine health. It's a secret of divine protection. It's the secret of increase. The secret of favor. The word of God living in me. Living in me. Come on, pray. Raka ba 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 sataya. Lem brata kata vege de bele de bosh. Raka ba 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 ba. I take your word seriously. 
I take your word seriously. No matter what happens to me, go ahead and pray. I refuse to look at the things that are seen. I refuse to look at the sickness in my body. I refuse to look at the challenge in my family. I look at your word. Come on, go ahead and pray. God is faithful by whom we were called into the fellowship of his son. God is faithful. He will not lie by these two immutable things. It is impossible for God to lie. The just shall live by faith, by the operation of God's word. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. Living by the word will make you a champion. Living by the word will make you the head and not the tail. I'm not just talking about climbing scriptures. Talk the word, live the word, speak the word, obey the word totally, 100% obedience. Come on, obtain grace, obtain grace, obtain grace. Come boldly before the throne of grace. Come boldly, don't come with timidity. You are washed in the blood of the Son of God. You are holy, you are pure, you are righteous. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace inside and outside. Make sure you're praying. Grace to live by the word. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, no matter what the doctors are saying, no matter what the economy is saying, no matter what situations and circumstances are saying, I live by the word. I live by the word. I live by the word Dedicate your life Commit yourself To the practice of the word Say Lord grace Grace to stay with the word Grace to be a student of the word Grace Who are down mountain Before Zerubbabel Before Zerubbabel Thou shalt be made plain at the shout of grace, at the shout of grace, at the shout of grace. Go ahead and declare grace to be a doer of the word, grace to let the word of God become your eyes. Go ahead and pray. Say, The word becomes my eyes, my perception is based on the word my response to life is based on the word my reaction is based on the word my convictions are based on the word my confidence is based on the word i believe the word i respect the word i live by the values of the word heaven and earth shall pass away but my word abided forever Hallelujah. You are truly not a citizen of the kingdom until you begin to live by the word. Jesus said to Satan, said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Bread there is a prophetic symbolism of your sensory perception. He said, but by every word, man can live by every word i live by his every word his every word for my health his every word for my finances his every word for this ministry his every word for all that concerns me i believe his word that his thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil i know i have a blessed tomorrow i know my tomorrow is greater than my today Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone. Pair yourselves into two. As we take this next prayer point.
please take it seriously you're going to speak i like you to take it seriously instrumentalist i like you to follow us as we pray hallelujah you're going to begin to speak god's word into that person's life and say in the name of jesus every blessing i know the word of god says keep speaking the blessing over their health over their finances go ahead and pray take it seriously you shall not die but live you are healthy you are strong you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country you are above pray pray you are the head and not the tail you are victorious in this life you are more than a conqueror you come out of every predicament you come out of every challenge go weeping and doors for a night but joy 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 comes to the morning joy go weeping and doors for the night joy pray for your neighbor call him the head call him the best call him anointed call him victorious the word of god will bring you out of that sickness will bring you out of that failure will bring you out of that tragedy release grace prophesy grace prophesy grace to your neighbor grace to live by the word grace to obey the spirit of god grace to respect the values of the kingdom speak over their families your family is coming out of every challenge yes they may have cried they are coming out they are coming out they are coming out by the word of god out of that financial situation they are coming out jesus will be glorified in your life jesus will be glorified you are lifted you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed from glory to glory grace to grace power to power increase to increase victory to victory grace to say no to sin grace to say no to satan grace to say no to every deceitful practice of the flesh grace to say no to every way that is not of god no matter how accepted it is by society grace to ride against the existing status quo inside and outside the lord is standing where you are praying take it seriously grace grace hallelujah 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 very quickly just in one or two minutes the lord just instructed me for us to do this hallelujah you're going to speak the word grace upon your life are you listening to me that's what god says i should tell them he said tell them to release grace upon themselves i know that many of us do not understand the power of grace see the grace of god can do for you what you will not be able to do all your life the grace of god will make your life sweatless i'm telling you it's the grace of god that can say you sleep in the prison today and wake up as a prime minister tomorrow it's the grace of god that took hadassah from a hamlet and made her queen the grace of god made daniel to reign through the dispensation of three kings go ahead and prophesy grace upon yourself take it seriously grace 
at the shout of grace 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 over my finances over my life higher grace the grace of God exalting me my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I'm anointed with fresh oil my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn grace I shout it grace the unmerited favor the unmerited favor Lord according to your instruction we are shouting grace grace over your family grace over your body the Bible says who are down mountain before Zerubbabel grace hallelujah hallelujah for many of you who can turn we are rounding up Zechariah chapter 4 were citizens of the kingdom were not ordinary we know the laws of the kingdom Zechariah chapter 4 if you can project it that will be great Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 Zechariah 4 verse 6 if you are there say amen. amen then he answered and spoke unto me saying this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying not by power nor by might hmm. he said not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the Lord God of hosts Verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? He said, Before Zerubbabel, before Joshua Selman, they coparatasia. He said, Who art thou, O great mountain? He said, Before Joshua Selman, thou shalt become a plain. Hear me. Listen. He said, And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with the shoutings of grace grace hallelujah I hope that we'll have time and then another time we'll talk on the grace of God we're out of time but I want you to go back home see hear me before you sleep tonight I'd like you to take even if it's just five minutes and shout this grace upon your life beyond your ability Covering for your inadequacies. The unmerited favor and access that the Lord gives a man. He said, Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. He didn't give us the reason. Grace. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight's meeting. Let your word truly find a place in our hearts. We receive grace to be doers of the word. make sure you are praying we have come to access wisdom we have come to access light we cry for light we cry for illumination grant us that which will empower us hallelujah I'd like you to pray one prayer before we sit. I'd like you to cry and say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding. Can you pray that prayer from the depth of your heart? Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. Give me access to light, access to illumination, access to light. Access to light, access to illumination. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! My faith.
reaches out to you and I believe your word for me Sing it and I believe. I believe. prevail over our spirits until there is conformity prevail over us until we become that which is expected according to the heart and the desire of the father we submit ourselves to your word and we ask that you teach us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ it's good to be back home good to have everybody around please greet one another and be seated greet one another and Please be seated. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. We have a lot to do tonight. We are starting a new series. And um, I want us to do the best we can to redeem the time. Amen. I'm excited every time I have the opportunity to come before us and teach because I have learned through experience that one of the ways to bless people is to enlighten them. Hallelujah. You can give people money, you can give people privileges, but one of the ways you bless people is to enlighten them. Unfortunately, we live in a generation that frowns at enlightenment because enlightenment is intangible and we have been trained by our environments to be carnal we always want something we can hold and relate with here and now such as money clothes cars and all of these very very mundane things but the informations that are intangible that empower us usually we do not have the patience to submit uh, i was having a conversation with one of the protocol people while I was on my way coming and I was driving and I looked at him he was sitting at the other side and I was wondering why I was looking at him while I was driving at the same time and I told him I said look my friend you will never succeed in life if you are not mentored and trained and he looked at me I said listen carefully to what I'm about to teach when we come and I was giving him instances I have learned and I am more convinced than ever before that training and mentorship is how successful people are made. It's not one of the ways. It's the only way. There are no options. Any other person giving you an option is a sign that he doesn't know what he's saying. Their mentorship and training is the only way people can become sustainably successful. Truthfully speaking, Mentorship is not listening to a man speak to you. Listen carefully. That's attendance. Mentorship is not opening up your ears to a man's teachings and having the teachings in your, your archives, your laptops, your systems. It may be a pathway, but mentorship starts with a decision that I am willing to submit myself to be taught and I will insist till I understand. Praise God. Mentorship does not start with the availability of information. It starts with a determination from the heart of the one who will be the recipient. It's a manifestation of humility to admit 
that there are dimensions that we do not yet see and know and have regardless of what our achievements are when we come before God and we come before people he has anointed to teach to train to build it is important that you assume the position of a student immediately and listen carefully and not just take notes but write it in the tablets of your heart and then obtain grace that's why we pray after every message why we are obtaining grace to walk in the reality of what we have heard the bible says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them it's one thing to know but it's another thing to have the grace to do brothers and sisters listen i may not boast it will be arrogant to boast of knowing everything nobody knows everything it will be arrogant to make a boast to claim to have arrived but one thing i can tell you is if you submit yourselves to these teachings wholeheartedly under god you will never fail regardless it's, it's not a prayer is the resultant effect trust me on this the ideas that we communicate to you in this house are not necessarily my ideas alone they have been age-long ideas that have been used by men and women who changed the course of history they have been age-long ideas that our fathers have used to do mighty things for God and now God has granted us the privilege to access these ideas so I don't want you whilst you are listening to these things to have a cynical heart debating whether or not you think is worthy of acceptance uh, personally I've made a commitment to believe and work with them so whether or not you do not believe it it does not affect my outcome because you see success is not corporate everybody will have to obey himself into the promised land I can help you but I can't force you there I came tonight with a very strong burden and I was very excited when the Lord put this in my heart it had been something that I planned to share but um, I mean it was it was so powerful when the Lord put it in my heart I really want you to succeed God sees my heart and um, the leaders know how much we are passionately committed about the success of everyone I believe and have held this conviction for years and I have taught many including our students in the school of ministry that loyalty 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 is a debt that you must pay when people are loyal to you it's as though you owe them something when people are loyal to your anointing loyal to your words loyal to your grace loyal to the dealings of god upon your life you must reciprocate that loyalty by ensuring that their trust is not disappointed that's why we pray that's why we fast that's why we prepare that's why we research that's why we study to make sure that every information that you receive is not only spiritual but life applicable and indomitable having a character that can suppress whatever limitations hallelujah so pray one more time and say lord i submit myself afresh please pray from your heart Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success systems, part one. Success systems, part one. Success Systems, Part 1. 
the goal of this series is twofold number one to reveal to us the requirements the requirements that must be satisfied for you to experience lasting kingdom success number two to unveil to you the laws the principles the secrets the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from God's standpoint it's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit it's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful it's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our lives so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one and um, I pray that God will help us two scriptures very quickly and then we'll take the course content second second Peter chapter 1 verse 8 please media we need to work with us very very fast tonight media help us second Peter 1 verse 8 and then we'll look at Genesis 39 verse 2 to 6 it says for if these things be in you what things certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in this context it says in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ but it applies to every area of life if these things are bound in you and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 four verses two to six genesis 39 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian we're reading to verse six and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in joseph's hand everybody say trust and he knew not what and he knew not what he had save the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favored help us tonight in the name of jesus christ write down the things we are going to be considering in this series please write those online follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you there are few things that we are going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop and pray but please i want to take my time and teach you this i want you to understand it and i trust that god will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in jesus name the first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure how real is failure is it a mirage or is it real number two we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom. Number two, we are going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom. What is God's idea of a successful person? The concept of success in the kingdom. Number three, 
we are going to look at the concept of laws and principles the concept of laws and principles can I continue number four definition of terminologies there's too much confusion so we need to clarify terminologies as it regards or as it relates to kingdom success definition of terminologies and then number four number five thank you the laws of success the laws of success we're going to be examining the laws and then number six will end with a very strong impartation and trust God to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives praise the Lord if you believe it say amen, amen. now statistically speaking statistically speaking five out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man give him 70 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain a testimony of regrets a testimony of sadness lost opportunities mishandled laws a life of fatal failure most people die in pain most people die advising their children don't be like me most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it pastors business people parents young people the same challenge is eating up our society the correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation as far as kingdom success is concerned so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real second point failure will happen to you if you allow it i think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with we have this inheritance mindset that by default just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail there's no such reality in the school of success let me tell you everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself it's a reality that is upon us by default <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say i reject it you better listen quietly to what i'm saying I am a very spiritual person i have learned the foolishness the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect please listen carefully i love you too much to deceive you i love you too much to mislead you 
And one of the graces God has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance. So anything you hear that you do not understand, just be patient. By God's grace, I'm a good builder. Every house is built by some man, he says, but God is the builder of all. And so we will not build a house that is lopsided. We'll build a house that stands solid on the rock. No matter what shakes it, it remains there. Say amen. amen. Failure is real, brothers and sisters. There are pastors who are failures, regardless of their spirituality. There are churches that are failing and have failed. Some of us here seated right now is an uncomfortable truth, but right now, if you will admit, you know you are failing woefully for many of us are we together now yes disappointed expectations and it's important that we find out god's system to bail ourselves out and do so very very fast so failure is real failure is very real we see it every day you see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets you see failure in the face of failed marriages a man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations I should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity failure is real it lives among us we see it in the faces of our dear loved ones we see it in the frustration of our parents you watch them and you know they are frustrated some of them are too arrogant to admit it so they act as though they are still in control but many have been forced, painfully so, to admit that there is something they are missing. Many people have been forced, amplified by the recession, to swallow their pride and admit I'm not getting something right. Nobody becomes a success by accident. Nobody becomes a success by chance by luck yesterday i was ministering at a crusade and i gave an instance i think I've, I've given that instance here and i want to repeat that example watch this if i make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then i sleep and i march Will gravity forgive me and say, no, I know you were joking. You were not serious. Next time be serious. No. Gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake. Every time I violate that law of gravity, I pay for it and I do so immediately. And sometimes I may not have a second chance again. This is how success is. And this is how failure is. Listen many well-intentioned people many christians born again and filled with the holy spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status their life should succeed automatically no being a christian gives you the potential and the access for success there is a difference between access and delivery access means potentials delivery means experience listen very carefully all that jesus christ did for us on the cross gives us access but there are systems built in the dealings of god with men that converts access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of God with man. There are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things. Number one, he calls it the person of Jesus. And number two, he calls it the principles of Jesus. Number one, he calls it the life of God. Number two, he calls it the laws of God. Everybody say the life of God. 
say the person of Jesus say the principles of Jesus and Mike Murdoch teaches that the person of Jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with God but it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now are we together now so I can be born again filled with the Holy Spirit if I die I'm going to heaven if Jesus comes I'm going to heaven I can live a life of peace whether in plenty or lack because his person has consumed me I have conformed to the image of the Christ experientially but then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of Jesus but the principles of Jesus everybody say the principles of Jesus that means I can be born again filled with the Holy Spirit and yet be sick born again filled with the Holy Spirit and yet be poor born again filled with the Holy Spirit and yet fail in career born again filled with the Holy Spirit and become a total failure in life such a possibility exists now most Christians have embraced the life of God but we have ignored his principles are we together now and most unbelievers have ignored the life of God but embraced his principles so most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that Jesus is not Lord over their lives but they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom applying the principles of the kingdom and i've taught you here in koinonia that there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed into his laws so that whoever obeys them will get the result regardless of whether he has a relationship with god or not there is a dimension of the power and the ability of god that is programmed in laws so it doesn't matter who applies them there are certain dimensions that are privy to only believers it is only in christ that those dimensions can be obtained like peace like the joy in the holy ghost are we together now like the life of jesus security of your eternal destiny the ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations all of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced christ but the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you're rising in character you are confirming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real i think it was a wise man i don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion write this down the word success let's define it let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom lord give us understanding give us passion to learn please give us isaiah 117 
a scripture just came into my spirit and I want you to see it. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17. Write this word down. Success. What is the definition of success? I'm, I'm trying to introduce the concept of success because, please look up, the body of Christ has had issues for a very long time. There are many denominations and there are many Christians, some of them looking at me right now, many listening to me online. Every time you mention the word success, especially in church and to a Christian, there is this buildup of resentment. We have associated success with carnality. We have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of Christ. Those who are carnal, they don't love God and want to be successful. And those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth. There's no such doctrine in the Bible. The Bible says looking up to Jesus, not up to a denomination, not up to a pastor. It's important to follow us, but be sure we are following Christ. And if at any point you are not following Christ, it is within your power to switch. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings. That a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation let me tell you something many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know i love the body of christ and i don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism i'm teaching the body and so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks listen carefully many of us have inherited this from our parents many of our, our loved ones so spiritual and well-meaning but this this um mindset especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy keep their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere is an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness endorsed irresponsibility endorsed lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed so change it and use it well one to go again he didn't say be successful he says learn you must be taught he says learn to do well it's not just saying make it uh -uh. learn be studious submit yourself under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well when i saw that scripture it was quite instructive learn to succeed joshua selman learn it is not in you by default learn the same way um where is he doctor it's not a doctor by default but you learn to become a doctor you learn to become an architect are we together you learn to become a mother that's why when ladies give birth for the first time their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn 
and I will succeed. Say, I will learn. I will be trained. And I will succeed. Look at this. When you want to become a doctor, what do you do? You pass through the medical school. Correct? When you want to become an engineer, what do you do? You pass through the engineering school. When you want to become an architect, what do you do? You pass through the system. So when you want to become a success, what do you do? Unfortunately, there is no official institution for making people successful. You see why many people are failures? There are many graduates because there are many universities. There are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary school. There are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime. But there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful. Learn to do well. Write this down. Success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal. Write it down. The word success has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with all of these things. Success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal. Any goal that is ideal, that is worthwhile, when you set goals and achieve them, you are said to be successful. This is the general definition of success. The accomplishment of a worthy goal, a worthy ideal. I want to become a doctor. And then you pass through the system and you become a doctor. With respect to that goal, you are successful. I want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it. And then eventually you get married and have your children. With respect to that goal, you are successful. So without goals, there is no basis for being successful. Are we together now? The accomplishment of a worthy goal, a worthy ideal, is what we call success. Now let me give you a kingdom definition of success. I've given you a general definition. Let's look at a kingdom definition. Write this down. The fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success from God's standpoint. The fulfillment of your God-given assignment, not just any goal. If an armed robber says, I must steal, and then he steals successfully, from an earthly standpoint, we say he has succeeded. From, but from the kingdom standpoint, it's not a success. The fulfillment of your divine assignment the fulfillment of your god given assignment is called success another definition the effective use this is my own definition now the effective use of your life your gifts and your resources to draw men to jesus and bless humanity is called success I'll take it again the effective use of your life comma your gifts comma your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success so when you use your life like a drink offering when you use your gifts and when you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by God's standpoint and by men's standpoint you are a success are we together now the effective use of your life the effective use of your gifts the effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity to advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity that's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money-mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another 
side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of god is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea about success that's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people now the truth is if you are successful it will show around you but the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom that you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars you are wearing shoes you are having estates all around and you're a great man moving around and people bow down to you and people call you all kinds of names and you have multiplied troubles multiplied psychophants that does not make you a success how much you use your life how much you use your gifts how much you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to live a life of impact blessing your world blessing your humanity every other thing cars houses all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success not the proof of success The proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the Father. The proof you have succeeded is a life transformed, not a car in your garage. The proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know Jesus because you did business well. Somebody coming to know Jesus because you read your book well. Somebody coming to know Jesus because of your marriage. Somebody coming to love Jesus because of your ministry. When your life has the capacity to draw men, regardless of what area you are functioning, to Jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures I will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northern man and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southern man and they are victimizing you down north or you are an eastern man and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles L A W S and then principles. I want us to examine the concept of laws and principles. Jesus, thank you. Look at me. In 
any other and every other aspect of our lives we believe in laws and principles but when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies we do not believe that they walk by principles it's a tragedy it's a tragedy please hear me brothers and sisters it's a tragedy when you go to school you know that there are laws and principles you are a science-based student they teach you all kinds of science things physics chemistry they teach you how to do a lot of things they teach you what to do they teach you laws different kinds of laws and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful i will tell you where our resentment for laws came from the imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works this is where we got our resentment for the word laws. Great men and women of God scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt, and I believe everything that they teach, in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of Christ into the reality of Christ's finished work. Listen carefully. In an attempt to show how that the old is gone, the Old Testament, you know, and that we are products of this new testament now in an attempt to help believers live the victorious life we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said we have drifted to another side of the pendulum and so the average believer especially the average pentecostal charismatic believer when you hear the word laws when you hear the word principles you just reject it you don't even need to know law of what you just say no 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 i'm not under the law Write this down. Laws are systems. Is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome. A law is a system of rules or just a system of operation. Either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations they are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable outcomes write this down laws are a reflection of god's justice system laws are a reflection of god's justice system the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations he didn't say where it never changed righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne laws are a reflection of god's justice system so that nobody will say god victimized others and did certain things no he leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail write this down laws are the keys to consistency and predictability laws are the keys please pay attention especially those following online wherever you are i want you to please pay attention take notes if you can't follow us on facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we're making posts please follow i have a passion to help you understand this laws are the keys to consistency and predictability write this down when your results do not change regardless of obstacles then you are operating by laws when your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years People like Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, 40 something years in ministry. Brothers and sisters, that ministry was built by laws. It was not just built by emotions. Many great corporations across the world. I don't know what the oldest um, retail outfit is in Nigeria. The oldest restaurant in Nigeria. But we have very great um, restaurants across the nation of the earth. 
right like Colonel Sanders and his Kentucky Fried Chicken and a number of people Walmart and all of this some of those outfits are hundreds of years old the founders have long been dead but the laws kept it write this down laws make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you write this down finally and then i'll begin to teach correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding not just application correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success everybody look at this mike is playing something do you know that the same way he's playing this if someone in ghana if someone in america plays based on whatever sequence is playing they will get the same result because they are based on laws is that true please help me with this this is nestle water how many of you know there's nestle water in lagos how many of you know there's nestle water in ibadan how many of you know there's nestle water in maiduguri the taste is almost the same if not the same the packaging and everything when you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it you would think they took the one here there there is consistency in results there is sustainability there is predictability there are many workers those who package this in lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone but they are all governed by the same laws so their results are the same correct thank you um pastor femi please come my friend please come two of you please stand here now look how smart they are both looking stand here please now look at this pastor femi has a knotted tie and this gentleman here has a knotted tie now watch this were you in the same room when you were not in your ties did you meet yourselves did you know you were going to knot ties but you took this rope did something to it and it became this and you see how much it looks like the same thing both of them were miles apart but engaging the same principle and regardless of their location the results were the same are we together now now this tie would not say lie lie i'm not going to not because i'm not in koinonia no if a thief not this tie to dress smart and go and steal the tie will not say you are a thief in two hours you are about to steal i won't agree no laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born-again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this not in ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs so it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know you've heard me say it many times something i do not know is responsible for my limitation in life how true how true the correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success we had a great time over at bida um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday 
and I'm sure some of them are following. It was such a great time as God always does in the meetings. And I had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions. Man of God, what is the secret to your anointing? And I, in my mind, I thought, I said, if I tell these people now, they will not believe it. Do you see that? As I'm speaking to you right now, somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of god at the same time you look at a graduate from unn you look at a graduate from abu you look at a graduate from unilag bring all of them together haven't never met themselves but they were submitted to the same laws they will talk as though they know they've known themselves for years correct that means there is something all of us can know that regardless of where you are all of us will call and they'll say are you experiencing the same result you say exactly as said do you believe that honestly if you don't believe this just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night the, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success Exhaust, is, is success important? Somebody may be asking me. Be patient and ask me five years from now. Remain the way you are and keep going. I will be glad to answer you five years from now. When you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now. When you watch the pain. When you watch three children stand before you. And say daddy we are hungry. When you watch your child become an arm robber. Simply because of failure. Then you will ask that question again. Is success important? It's a terrible thing. Please be careful how you listen to people. Don't criticize men of God. Don't criticize leaders. Even business experts. Be careful. Right now we have all kinds of business experts. Anyone just chokes himself with tie. Holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere. And teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense. And in the end of it, you are so motivated because of the rhetorics and the gimmicks that are used. And then at the end of it, you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster. And you get back into square one. Be careful. I desire to succeed with my life i have tasted a bit of it it gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry i know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry i know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of god and not have anybody to bless today by the grace of god we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting i have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and i know they work they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. One of, I think is I think his patients, I spot her here. She sent me a text, very, very funny text. And um, she's a student in the school of ministry. And I'd been teaching them a number of things. And then she, she went to Zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. According to her, she was shaking and wondering whether it would happen. And I mean, in minutes, that person was shaking and blasting in tongues. And she called me and said, my God, look at this thing. And then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly. Predictability. Predictability. There are keys. Nobody is born rich. Nobody is born blessed. Are we together? He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. It's your you can live out like that or you can change i made a decision that i will change it's a decision that i made and i want you tonight if you have not made that decision to make a strong decision i'm taking it gradually with us because i want us to understand this let's define terminologies right we're going to define 14 words that will be playing around within this series 14 words that have been misunderstood i don't want to make the mistake of believing that when i mention a word all of us understand that this is what i'm saying write it down the first word i've already defined it success the accomplishment of a worthy goal am i boring you please write 
the second word i want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure what is failure write it down that's the second word i'll be very very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray jesus we bless you failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective you are said to have failed when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective the inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor and um, maybe I may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as on merited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed number three what is favor men investing their time credibility and resources to help you achieve your goals what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down I had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day i was inspired and i wrote it down about grace just pay attention as i listen as i read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion and exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me i'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen 
grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from god and only in and through christ now listen i wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the holy spirit okay this is me writing permit me i'm reading as i just wrote directly this morning the holy spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace i have ever heard and known and i'll tell you what the holy spirit told me about grace ready james 1 17 this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 this is the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited 
does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access <laughs> Grace is access. Definition number five. Let's hurry up. Works. Let's define works. Now that I've defined grace, I have to define works. Because if I do not define works, um, then there will be a lot of confusion. let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um, were captured in the judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in Ju in the judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today your partnership towards making promises manifest is what i call works your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works we need to define this because i'm going to be playing around with these words and um it's important that all of us when you hear it you know what i'm saying number what now let's hurry up i will rush now number six excellence let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down 
the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness or familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the tenth terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension eleven wisdom we're almost there eleven wisdom correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge write it down wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom
Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm imagining? I'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say, Apostle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, look, you will be too blessed to do it. Even if you don't like me, you will do it. You will turn back. One day I'll come to your house and when others are languishing, I will see you together with your children giving God praise and say, today is a day off. We are just worshipping and blessing his name. And people will say, are you in Nigeria? You say, no, I, I, I'm only here, but we, 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 we sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order. Remember I used to say this thing years ago. Believe it oh. Believe it. I imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying, Mama, I know you did not make it in this life, but I have a surprise. Cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say, Mama, the car you did not drive, this is it. Let the devil do anything he would do. Do you think your mother will be happy? You are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members clothes because of rent. I must kill you now. How much? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes, it's there. God bless you. Not alone. I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching. And say, this is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12. Prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. Number 13. Goals. G-O-A-L-S. Goals. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14, the last word. Value. V-A-L-U-E Value What is the definition of value? Write it down Point of difference What is the definition of value? Point of difference Another definition Your uniqueness Another definition Your skill So what is value? Your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value i repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying God is called value take a deep breath you have tried you have been writing 
some of you that's a key to drive laziness you've not done this in a long time I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many. I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight. I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain. Listen, I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church, your ministry, your group excel or fail. I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become. Write this down. Success is predictable. I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful. Success is predictable now. I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed. There are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail. It's a very sad truth. They will be offended and they will think he's proud. Are you God? And then you see that you really fail. Failure is also predictable. Write it down. So success is predictable. Semicolon. Failure is also predictable. I can look at your life, brothers and sisters. And I can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior. You are going to be a very great word addict. But I know that as far as success is concerned, you may not be very successful. I can look at your life and I know that you are going to be a very rich man. You will buy the jets and the Rolls Royces. But you will never be a spiritual man. I can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price i can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man i can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came You know, years ago, as I began to pursue the things of the Spirit, I stumbled across materials that taught on this. I folded them with speed and threw them one side. Said, Look, let me press on this. How foolish I was. Imagine that I came for Koinonia now. And after preaching a powerful message, I now tell you, all of you, you are going to sow. My mind is not stable. I'm, I, need, I need, you have to pay my rent. I'm blessing you. The Bible says A and B and C. Everybody stand up. Worship team, you are bringing 50,000. Prayer band, you are bringing 1 million. <laughs> Benga, <laughs> you are not praying for nothing. 1 million. Leaders, you are bringing 2 million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you. Yes. It will never happen in this ministry. Where I will say please. Raise offering for me. So that I can eat well. No. You know what we call escape velocity in physics. Where you have gone past certain things. It's not pride. It will never happen again till Jesus comes. I found my way. 
to better days I found my way to better days for many of you tonight you're on your way to better days let them laugh at you you're on your way Prophesy to yourself. for one minute and say Lord I am truly changing I'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact, a life of dignity, a life of beauty, a life of peace, a life of glory. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we have had all the peripherals. Please listen, I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it. For some of you, is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat. For some of you, is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success. For some of you, there are men of God probably listening to me. You have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection listen if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things when i look at people who say god forbid over my dead body i will never do this and that i tell them keep quiet you don't know the pressure that failure forces people Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you would do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia. Years ago when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand in success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father I think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded and I don't know if it was whatever it is but it was a very serious issue and the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief burden bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me she said the boss looked at her own mother and said you are not a, a small girl you know what to do if you want a raise someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man 
Now, I know you are, we, are, we have, we can shout in church. Ah, I won't do it. Don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot. When somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night, he never planned it. That's what treasure me. When the girl told me that thing, do you know what happened? Do you know that after the man paid that woman her money, the shame she had to still quit the job and leave? When the lady told me, I said, Oh God, what is this? We are here jumping in church saying, Since I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. That is such a lie. I've seen many righteous people forsaken. Oh, I've seen many of their seed beg for bread. We sing it by faith and I believe it. But I have seen many righteous people, such as our parents, such as your brother and your sister. You know them. They love God. They have been dejected and forsaken. They forsook loves and good things left them. Success is predictable. Failure is predictable. You can make up your mind from today that you are going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success. You can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in, in a way and a dimension that you have never seen. To obey these laws and excel. Let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight. Ready? The laws of success. Thank you, Jesus. Ready? The first law of success, the law of relationships. Write it down. The law of relationships. Ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life. Embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm. Everybody say the law of relationships. Shout it. The law of... Write this down. Success is highly relationship dependent. Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent. Number two, everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Write it down. Everything, I don't care what it is, anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it. Money can buy a house, relationships can buy a house. Money can help you build a church relationship can help you build a church listen money as you know naira and cobalt dollars pounds yen these things are not the only means of exchange relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things there are many ignorant people who want to be successful but they do not know the law of relationships so they have to look for money to pay for everything you ask them and they tell you i need five million i need ten million whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for there are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and it entered free are we together now there are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent there are people who have had to pay for everything in life listen if you use money to buy everything in life you are not wise no. it is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life it has nothing to do with being rich that's the mistake our parents made 
I love our parents. Don't get me wrong. Some of you here are parents. We love you. We honor you with all our hearts. Most people think you only succeed when you start having salary, 100,000 coming. And they now say, wow, I have 100,000. Then they have a need. They ignore relationships. And something that would be cheaply paid for, they would have to look for money and pay for it. I have paid for many things in my life using relationship. Relationship like a debit card. You can use it and withdraw many other things. You can use it and pay for many other things. Relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms. I am connected to people. Listen, connectivity is a key to success. You must be connected. Relationships can help you access anointings. Relationships can help you access endorsements. Relationships can help you access favor. 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 The major ingredient in success is favor. But it takes relationships. We have come with open arms. Oh, let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC. We have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances i'm not talking about finances necessarily but i'm just using it as a case study relationships people have blessed me today purely based on relationships not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of god just to bless do you know that somebody in zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying. Somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship. During my birthday, people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes. I, I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done. that I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. 
relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you enter there many of us have been trivializing relationships that's why we keep hustling the bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them he does not know the road to the city by the grace of god i understand the ministry of destiny helpers the ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship god has used me as a destiny helper to many god has used many people as destiny helpers to me hallelujah cheap victories that many of us lose cheap victories some of our parents do not know anybody and so you pay for everything and when you want to use money alone to be successful a day will come you will have all the money in your life and you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do are we together there are people you know one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that i've learned from my father my father is a man who was wealthy in relationships i used to think he was just you know you know just someone who just likes people but now that i've grown i have seen the wisdom relationship paid many bills for my father relationships let me tell you something relationship is an investment the same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship all this something for nothing is, is a joke there are many of us we have this self-flattery they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text message as if you die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but he's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly he said are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy and you miss my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day 
and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there, you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one oh they are ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm i'm trusting god for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense i say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one thousand two hundred naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium 
someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say I, I prayed and God led me to come and submit my CV he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and I say this sincerely this is one secret that Muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a Muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I, I love them we love Muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god Are we together? There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. There is no day. I say it, may God forgive me if I'm lying, but it's true. There is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me. You cook by yourself. You wash your clothes by yourself. You intercede for yourself. No relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you're looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age we're not thinking like them 
that means most likely they will be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i'll be i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing it's impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness
so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we are about leaving be that today and a man of god who also came for administration the man of god came for administration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for administration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seat in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter i have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray i will stop here lord one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody's pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilets of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it pained me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to u.s to go and scrub toilet if can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere caught them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you 
you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i'd like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank god open your mouth and say god thank you you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys You are revealing to me the keys. You are revealing to me the keys. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Come be God. Many of you don't know this gentleman. You see this guy? This guy would never fail in life. Ask me why. Because when we started, listen carefully. When he and I started, the time we used to meet in the campus and sit on his slab, and this gentleman, the same way he's holding his guitar, that's how he, he was a person who was holding the guitar and playing. And he, would, everybody usually will be seated when it's time to preach, but he will have to stand with me. There's another dear lady, she was the one who would hold light for me. That's her work. She did it joyfully, bring her touch light. Every time I was going to read a scripture, she would do it joyfully. Those two people will never, never beg for bread, not when I'm alive. Yes, no, 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 it's not amen. This is a reality. I'm serious about it. I can mention names of people. I told you about my principal, who I went to visit early this year, and I looked at him. He had become an old man now. And I said, God, in my lifetime, please let me build a house for this man and buy a car for him and bless him with a seed that brings tears from his eyes before he goes to me. It's a covenant I made with myself. What did he do? He believed in me. I remember seeing me as a young boy and he looked at me and said, you are smart. He had a little keyboard and he called me to come and sit down. And I had come from a background of so much complex and pain. He made the entire school to gather in front of me and he said I should play keyboard for them. And that was the beginning of the healing process for inferiority that today nations are getting blessed from. I was not born this way. Never forget those who believed in you when you were nothing. You see, let me tell you something about greatness. As you start rising, levels will change. Don't let your mind change. Because you will start seeing psychophants. People who you meet on the journey and they are there to make it look like at your level should you now be relating with these ones. This woman used to sweep your house. Now you have become a big woman. You are even going to marry a millionaire. Just find 2,000 and let her go away. Please, this smelly woman, not your class. A wise person will say, if she could sweep my house when I had nothing, she deserves to sweep my palace. She even deserves a palace of her own relationships anything money can buy relationship can buy it you have been paying for too many things using finances start using relationships lift your voice and cry because God bless you and love you lift your voice and say Lord connect me connect me connect me pray connect
next week. I know our time is gone, but pray. I'm handing to you keys that will make your life remarkable. Man of God, pray for relationships. Strategic relationships. Covenant relationships. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take away the spirit of offense because offense is the killer of relationships. Hear me? Your friends will never be perfect people, just like you are not. There are many of you, you're, you're sad. You can never have a friend for two weeks and not talk about A to B and talk about B to C. It's a devilish attitude. I like you to pray and say, Lord, take that attitude out of my life. Bitterness on offense. Grace to forbear. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my destiny friends. Grace to endure the weaknesses of my valuable friends. Grace. Listen, Pastor Femi, come. Many of you don't know why you see me stand with Pastor Femi. It's not just because Pastor Femi is my son in the gospel. Let me tell you. Do you know before he became a pastor, Pastor Femi used to be the one to carry equipment for washing team. This washing team you see. He was, he would carry the equipment and sit down in Rema Chapel. They will finish the hazard. He will help to close and God was watching. God was watching. Foolish people were saying you are wasting time. Why are you human worship? And God was watching. God does not lift proud people. God lifts those who can serve with their heart and their life. Gradually, gradually, occasionally he would play bass guitar. Humble himself. Even when he became a pastor, there were times he was playing bass guitar. One day I had to tell him, no, it's okay. The person assisting him now, Francis. Francis is a friend of Charles. Francis was in protocol. Look at how God is lifting people except you. God is lifting people except you because pride has still kept you where you are. Big money sin. There are people who humble themselves to serve. There are people in this ministry the level of grace they have, they can be geos of great ministries. Yet you see them doing very frail activities. Some of them are in protocol, running around. He resisted the proud. He gives grace to the humble. You see what God has done in his life today. God bless you. Aaron, come. Let me give you. Come, Aaron. Many of you do not know that the first person who was the protocol of ENI was Aaron. This gentleman you see standing here. When we were doing crusades, nothing to write home about. Oh, in everybody, everywhere. Just moving by faith. It was Aaron who was in charge of logistics and buses. I remember shouting at them and pushing them and all of these things. This guy you see. Aaron. Yet till today, the way he is, you still see him greet some of the leaders. Some of these people are young, they are younger than him by far in age, younger than him in experience and all of that. And you see him still act and where there is an opportunity, you see him serve with all his heart. Aaron is one person who has served me and served God with his life and I've made a vow and a covenant no matter what happens, I will never watch him and his children beg for bread. Thank you, Aaron. Question. A few years from now, who is going to call you? Do you know a Jimmy's wife, this lady you see, as of 2010, she was a member of protocol. 
Protocol when we're doing Kingdom Well Summit. Had not married her husband yet. Protocol. Serving with all her heart. Establishing quality relationships. Today, look at their children. All copying what the parents are doing. You are allowing time to pass. God is sending strategic people to your life. You insult everybody who is not you. You are out to look for imperfections. This lady is too loud. This person is too this. It is true they have those issues. But can you ignore it and see that God is connecting you with a ladder that will wipe your tears forever? Our parents ignored it. And today they keep frowning at televisions when they see their colleagues. Pray one minute. Open my eyes to see those who are my destiny helpers. Open my eyes to see the relationship I must protect at all costs. Open my eyes, oh God, to see the relationship. Not all relationships I want keeping. Not all relationships I want protecting. But I tell you, there are relationships that I want keeping forever. relationships in your life and begin to invest unashamedly in them. Five people that God has brought in your life that you know you need no matter what it is. You don't have to invest in everybody. There are people after 20 years is still a waste. But let me tell you there are relationships you must protect at all costs. Some of us are penny wise and pound foolish. We can destroy today or try to enjoy today. We destroy a relationship that is long lasting. I have seen people, I have counseled people who destroyed relationship with great people over trivial matters. Matters of marriage, matters of money, matters of job, matters of reputation, matters of ego. Broke great relationships with people. I know great men today who have vowed in my presence that they will never help certain people because of their attitude. Last prayer. Father, give me the grace to be friendable. Give me the grace to be relatable. May my life not drive people away. May my words not drive people away. May my attitude not drive people away. May my sense of resentment against people not drive them away. Pray. Suffer system. The mystery that have been responsible for the common life, the common need that is in the life of many people. Hallelujah. Look up. We are rounding up now. Some of you need to call your parents tomorrow and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call your siblings and restore your relationship. Some of you need to call maybe some people in your department. Even as workers in this house, some of you need to say, look, I'm tired of this. I can't be fighting everybody. Master the art of celebrating people. That's one of the keys of relationship. Master the art of lavishly and truly celebrating people. Ah, Marcelina, you have a lovely voice. Amaka, you have a lovely voice. Ah, empty, you are playing well. Don't just say what is special. You see, the moment you trivialize people's worth, they run away from you. That's why you never see me talk about any man of God and try to show that I am higher. No, 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 no. You hardly even see me call any of these my people, my son, my this. It's still a heaviness in my spirit. 
Don't resent people to show you are higher. No. Celebrate people. Our children come here after service. You see me hug them and appreciate them with all my heart. You come here whether I know you or not. I'm shaking you, I'm greeting you, I'm hugging you. After service, I tell you, hug one another. Some of you just pull your mouth and you are going straight to the bus. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, are, you can add 10 years of pain to your life by ignoring one person. Father, I pray for your people tonight in the name of Jesus. You are revealing to us success systems that will bring us into uncommon dimensions of triumph. I pray, oh God, that every spirit of bitterness that is in anyone here that is responsible for driving valuable people, may that spirit live your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God will give you the unashamedness to invest in profitable relationships. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will have at least two to three valuable people in your life that you can call friends in me. And I declare and declare that every wrong attitude that you have portrayed that has driven great people from your life, I declare a restoration for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, I command a reconnection for you with the great and valuable people who will lift you to the next level. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Put your hands together for Jesus and please keep standing. Please keep standing. Please keep standing. Our time is gone, but I just want to perform two functions very quickly. Number one, I want to make an altar call. Why do we do this every time? We do this because there is somebody who needs to have a relationship with Jesus. We are talking about the law of relationships. There are some of you outside. The first relationship you need a connection with and two is Jesus Christ. You will never succeed in life outside of him. You may have been coming around. Some of you are outside. Some of you are online. Some of you were invited. You heard me speak. You are hearing me speak again. And the Lord is telling you, I need a relationship with you. I want to build your life. Some of you need a reconnection. That connectivity has been broken. Wherever you are, please, I will count one to four very quickly. Don't wait for anybody to come. Take a bold step and make your way out here right now. One, quickly. Please appreciate them as they come. I believe there are people here and there. If you are coming, please come. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Please run and come. Two, I'm counting one to four. God bless you. God bless you. You can stand on your feet, please. Those outside, keep coming. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's a reconnection. Man of God, I need this relationship. I don't want my life to be a failure. He said, he who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Keep coming. Three. God bless you. Don't be ashamed of him. He's the friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for your courage. If you're coming, still join them quickly. Quickly, I see people coming. Our mother is coming. God bless you, Mama. Please come and join them quickly. Let's appreciate our mother. God bless you. Bless you. Now, I want you to lift your right hand, all of you in front. Lift your right hand and mean it seriously. We're out of time, but then don't make a joke of it. It's a supernatural experience. Say in the name of Jesus, tonight, I declare that my heart belongs to Jesus. I surrender to you totally, completely. I ask that my sins be forgiven. See, the power of God is even on you as you are praying. I receive the life of God right now. And I declare that I'm a child of God from today. My sins are forgiven. I have a new beginning. I declare that I'm reconnected back to the source of my life, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Father, receive these ones. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will take them from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you honor their decisions and I pray, oh God, that this will be forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much for coming. 
There's a gentleman waving his hand. One of you are likely to just move in concert and you will. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.